All right, we'll wait for uh, Ms. Cooper to return. And I'm actually having a little, little snack here. I was trying to trying to stop the recording and that didn't work either. <laughs> so we, we actually have been recording straight through that. Well, well here, wait. Ms. Campbell is back. Okay, um, back from a break. Um, and um, attorney Jarris, you have some more uh, questioning of uh, Ms. Mekshin. Uh, Ms. Mekshin, I remind you that you are still still under oath. Do you understand? I do. Thank you. All right, uh, attorney Jarris. All right, could you please turn to exhibit R11? It starts on page 144. Do you recognize this document? Yes. What is it? It is a um, extension of a probationary period letter. And would you have seen this document before it was sent from or given from Ms. Pinch to Ms. Campbell? I may have given the template. We have templates for these type of letters. So I believe I gave the template and I may have seen it after. I don't, I don't, I don't recall. Okay. <clears throat> There's an sort of a, a italicized section right in the middle. Um, could you please um, review that and explain how that does or doesn't apply to Ms. Campbell's situation. You want me to read what it states? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. A probationary period. I, I don't think it's, a, no, it's not necessary to read it. I think what she means is just read it to yourself. And is that correct, Attorney Jairus? Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Yes, so this language is in line with the Chapter 701 um, of HR policies. Um, if we haven't had an adequate opportunity to fully assess the employee's performance um, or the employee has not had adequate opportunity to demonstrate successful performance, we can extend the probationary period. And how did that apply to this situation with Ms. Campbell? Yes, so um, because of her, um, what we understood to be not performing during the probationary period and with the issues with her supervisor, it was decided that this would be a time to extend the probationary period to make sure that she's been adequately trained. Um, you know, if there was any concern, other concerns um, that they could be addressed with this extension. And what did, you said not any concerns about Ms. Campbell not performing. What do you mean by that? So when an employee is showing that they cannot perform during a probationary period, we sometimes will grant an extension to give to see if uh, efforts made during that extension can be made to make the or to help the employee meet the expectations of the position. If they cannot, then we would uh, uh, basically terminate them on probation. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's. Um, Ms. Campbell has testified that her supervisor was changed after the hostile to many behavior investigation, were you involved in that decision? At the same time, looking at the extension, it, it was talk, it talked about, should it be Marie Rutten that continues to be the person? Um, and it was a discussion that 
no, we should probably have somebody outside because there was already a feeling that she has intimidating behaviors. And while she has been given the letter of expectation to improve, we don't want to hold up, you know, an employee's performance or anything like that. So we decided to have change the the supervisor at the same time. Okay. And you mentioned a letter of expectations. Was that for Ms. Rutten or Ms. Campbell? Well, Ms. Rutten was going through that, but um, I believe expectations were also set with Ms. Campbell okay. during that time. Let's find a document. I know it's okay. Could you please turn to exhibit thirty four, which starts on page two thirty seven? Do you recognize this document? Yes. What is it? This would be a letter of expectation. And did you see this document before it was sent from Kim Pinch to Ms. Rutten? Yes, I believe so. And could you, um, Please describe what the purpose of this document is. Sure. A letter of expectation is a letter to address concerns that have been recently um, seen or developed or have been ongoing. And um, it is also a letter that what the supervisor's ongoing expectations are. And basically by setting those expectations, you put the employee on notice that they need to improve. Um, it's kind of like a performance improvement plan um, is what we kind of would compare it to. But also it warns the employee that if they don't, if you don't see improvement as the supervisor, that it potentially could lead to discipline. And if you look at the second page of this exhibit, which is labeled 238, Correct. It talks um, about some training courses. Were you involved in identifying those courses? Um, yes, I believe so. And was um, Ms. Rutten instructed to complete those courses? Yes. Um, she'll be, she would be required to complete the following six online courses and by a date. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, I'm going to switch topics now. Um, as of 20, the year 2018, did UW Madison have a contractual process? 2018, did you say? Sorry, cut out on my end. Yes, as of 2018, was there a contractual transfer process? No. Um, did UW-Madison ever have a contractual transfer process? Attorney Jarris, could you describe, I have no idea what you mean by a contractual transfer process. Okay, Who, I, I'll con actually- Contract with whom? <laughs> I'll ask Ms. Mekshin to describe the contractual transfer process. Thank you. So contractual transfer uh, was when we would use the civil service process through the state 
the state civil service process where an employee would have the right to laterally change with their same type of position. So um, let's take a financial specialist. They could con contractually transfer over to another unit in, with that same title without a thorough recruitment process. And um, you. based on seniority, they would be given the opportunity for that role as long as they successfully um, successfully completed probation. And I believe you testified that that process did not exist in 2018. Do you know why um, that process no longer existed? Yeah, the university uh, went with their own personnel system and no longer went through the civil service process. Do you have a sense of uh, when that change occurred? 2015. Um, so after that change was made, how um, did employees, what's the process for employees getting different positions at the university? You have to apply, um, you have to apply for every position um, and, uh, and go through the recruitment process. Thank you. Could you please turn to exhibit 16? which starts on page 159. Sure. Do you recognize this document? Yes. What is it? It's application history taken out of the TREM system, the system we use for recruitment. And did you create this document? Um, I had somebody from uh, HR, from the HR team, create this is document. This, is this a, a, a report that the, that the university can regularly generate? Yes. And it's information the university regularly keeps? Yes, standard business, okay. yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so does this, uh, reflect, um, Ms. Christian ap applying for various jobs at UW-Madison? Yes, Donna Christian. Mm -hmm. And can you tell whether she applied for any jobs at the university um, during or after she obtained the job in radiology when you had interviewed her as part of your uh, investigation? I have to look at the date here. Um, it doesn't have this. Yes, I believe would have been the last. It goes from um, oldest to the bottom has the newest. So yes, she would have after radiology. I have a question here. I, I don't see dates anywhere. Am I missing? Are there dates somewhere? I'm going to ask a question of how Ms. Uh, thank you. knows that. So we how do. can okay. you tell she applied for jobs so, after the position in radiology she held when you interviewed her? So as long as I've been in this role, I can tell by the transaction ID, the one that is the highest is the most recent. So it's in the third column after the name. If you look, 106012 is a high number, so that would be the most recent. And that so are you talking been... about the GEMS transaction ID? ID, yes. Excuse me. And yes. can you tell which position she, which was her radiology position at the time you 
interviewed her? Yeah, it would have been the gem transaction ID would have been 103359. It's the second one up from the bottom. And and which one? Oh, that was her position um, at the medical school, um, yes. the radiology department, and it says that in the description, correct? Correct. Got it. So everything above that, if we're understanding this correctly, would be jobs she applied to after she obtained the job in radiology. Say that. Can you please repeat that again? Well, my headphones are come. So <laughs> I just want to confirm my understanding that this second job from the bottom is her radiology job. Yep. At at the time you t interviewed her for your investigation. Yes. And then all of the jobs above this job are things she applied for subsequent to her position reflected by the um, GEMS code. Yes. Everything I have a, oh, go ahead. Radiology would have been prior to the radiology. Yes. Every, everything above would have been prior or subsequent? Would have been prior. Okay, I had that wrong. I'm glad the judge followed up. So there was just one job she applied to after. Correct. Got it. So that's, thank you. <laughs> I was reading it wrong. <laughs> and that was the position. Um, well, what department was that position in? Um, so the is College of Ag and Life Sciences as a financial specialist senior. Okay. Uh, could you please? I, I actually have a, excuse me, another clarification question. Um, just because it's my understanding from previous testimony that uh, Ms. Kristen had been in um, the radiology department twice. Um, so I'm wondering, um, are you aware of that, uh, Ms. Mekshin? I'm just wondering which, which time, I'm getting the general drift, but um, I don't see Ah, the third one down, 101385, was that the first time she was in the position? Yes, it would have been prior. Right. It would have been prior. From so the this one down, yep. Well, the, th the third one down would have been the first time that she were well sales associate is the first one so going down two more to 1013885 that would have been the first time she served as financial specialist senior and then in the radiology department and then the second one from the bottom would have been the second time she yeah. served at okay okay thank you very much for that clarification yeah and you can tell in column uh, on the second page, 160, where she was hired. So the application status will say, um, GEMS new identification form paperwork complete. That means she received that role. So I. Oh, I see. Yes, so no, I do see that. So the third, third one down in radiology would be the GEMS new identification form paperwork complete. Yep. Um, the, the first time she was there and then um, the so, second from the bottom was the second time. Yeah, and so you can see where it says no longer considered. That means those were jobs she applied for that she wasn't sent to the recruitment process. Thank you. All right, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. All right, could you please turn to exhibit R17, which 
starts on page 163. Do you recognize this document? Yes. What is it? It's a job history report that we can pull from UW Systems uh, program um, regarding employee information, OBIE is what it's called, the program. And did you run this report? I, I can't recall. <laughs> I probably did. <laughs> But it was 617 of 19, so I, I'm i sorry, I cannot recall. More than what I did. I can pull this report, though, yes. Okay, and it's information the university keeps? Yep, standard information. Mm -hmm. Okay, and who is it a job history report for? Donna Christian. And if I understand it, when we leaf through these pages, the... It's horizontal rows that are just split onto multiple pages. Correct. Okay. In what unit did Ms. Christian work from June to October 2018? Sorry. And that would be just so we can make sure we're talking about the fourth the, the third and fourth line. So if we were to continue um, to the next page, would that also be the third and fourth lines? Vertically? But I, I, I'm having trouble and I think you need to explain um, how how you are getting the information you're being asked for. So I I do see on um, this first page, uh, Donna Chris, Kristen, um, the third line says t um, job start date 10-28-2018. The first, first line says job start date, date is June 10th of 2018. That it appears to be be what Attorney Jarris is referencing, correct, yes. Attorney Jarris? So, so if you could phrase your question in a way that we could follow um, how um, uh, Ms. Mechon is, is going to be able to give her answer on this particular document. And I know it makes it complicated because you broke up the spreadsheets so we could read them and I, I really appreciated that, but I need a little more um, clarification. Yes, that was my next question is how can you tell? So if you look at the third entry from the top, is that a job within the School of Medicine and Public Health in the Department the of Radiology? Entry, the third entry is not radiology. It's Which fourth, entry is radiology? The fourth entry. Starting on June 10th, the job start date, June 10th of 2018. Correct. And how can you tell? So, again, I have to kind of match it up, but then I go across, I can see the sub department code, A53-9300. That's how we identify our departments within um, SMPH. A53 identifies the School of Medicine Public Health. 9300 is um, specific to radiology. And that's so, the four, fourth line down, correct? Correct. Right, thank you. On the second, on the second page, which on is page 164, gotcha. Yep. And what's the start date from this position? 610 of 2018. And that's the last column on the first page of this exhibit? Yes, fourth down. Mm -hmm. And then the row above that, what work unit does this reflect? So it says AO7, which AO means it's a UW-Madison campus. And if I would go back to the previous thing, I think it would probably be CALS. 
because that was the last place she applied. So I just know by A07, that's the UW-Madison campus that identifies the college. But again, I haven't worked at Cal, so I don't know their UDBS. <laughs> Uh, Are you able to tell it was not a job within the School of Medicine and Public Health? Yes, it's not a job within SMPH, School of Medicine. And how can you tell that? Because the U the sub-department code is A07. So, and her start job for that row, the third row, is October 28th, 2018. Is that correct? Correct. So she wouldn't have been working for the medical school anymore as of that time. Correct. It looks like she left shortly after the investigation or in between that, actually, before I even, she left before I even concluded the investigation. action column. So on the th third, the final page of this p exhibit, our, not our, but Bates page number 165. Yep. It seems like the third and fourth lines third and fourth rows, the third reflects the job not in SMPH, and the fourth reflects the job in radiology. Is that correct? Correct. And there's a column that says action, sort of in the middle, mm -hmm. and it looks like there's a reason listed Is that, does that reflect movement from uh, radiology attorney, to the... Attorney Jarris, I'm sorry, I don't see where it says action. If you are in fact on um, page uh, 164. 165. I don't see. Oh, <laughs> okay, well, I, uh, I'm having a little tr trouble following your, your questioning here. I thought we were on 164. And when you talk about the first three rows, some of these rows are kind of blank. So I'm assuming even if they're blank, um, so if we go up to the 164, um, we've got a job end date, 228, a job end date, 416, 2011, and then we've got an empty one. So when you're talking about the third and fourth rows, I'm assuming that you're talking about the rows, Attorney Jarris, not necessarily whether they have anything in them. So, Correct. Yeah, so it's a, it's not clear. It won't be clear for the record. So what, with regard to this somewhat um, confusing exhibit, because it's divvied up the way it is, um, please be a little more specific in your questions and maybe um, indicating more information on the line so that um, the record reflects exactly what um, data you're talking about. Okay. Thank you. And I guess my most recent one, okay, there is the action. I see, I see on 165, got it. Okay, and I'm, I'm skipping the red column. Right, right, right. The red row, mm -hmm. and then I'm counting down one, two, three. Mm -hmm. It says transfer. Does yep. that reflect from Ms. Campbell's movement from job in radiology to the non-job in radiology that or non-SMPH job that we just talked about? So this is actually Donna Christensen. Oh, <laughs> I got Sorry. all confused, but <laughs> does this, this, does this Donna reflect Christian. Donna Christian's movement from um, the radiology job to the non-SMPH job we just talked about? Yes. And what is meant by the word transfer? 
So transfer is um, something that HR has to enter. When we have somebody who's currently an employee at the university, we have to enter transfer because um, it's, there's benefit implications. So, um, so HR puts in transfer to show that there's like not a, um, not a uh, gap in service. So meaning because we're under WRS, <laughs> um, the retirement system, we have to show it as transfer. So whenever you internally transfer within uh, UW-Madison, it has to show as a transfer. So there's no benefit implication. And is this different than the contractual transfer process yes. you yes. discussed That's before? Right. Yes. Hey, could you please turn to Exhibit 19? That starts on page 167. R19 um, starts on page... Oh, 169. <laughs> 169. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you recognize this document? Yes. This is application history. For whom? Teresa Campbell. Is this a report you generated? They had campus generate, correct. Is it information that um, the university regularly keeps? Yes. And is this a type of report you can generate? Yes. Can you tell um, which row represents Ms. Campbell's position in the Department of Radiology? Sure. It's the 12th from the bottom. So if you count 12 up from the bottom, that would be the one. Let me count. Sorry. <laughs> what, is that 103358? Let me see. The transaction ID, that would be helpful. 103358, correct. And how can you tell? Um, because I can tell by the um, UDDS, which is the number we identify with the radiology department. Is that the you transaction can... ID? No, if you go over into the posting title, Financial Specialist Senior Medical School Radiology. It says it right next to it. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yep. Okay. Got it. And are these arranged chronologically, these rows? Yes. How can you tell? Um, by the drum transaction. And could you let us know whether the top reflects the oldest or the latest or the newest dates? The top would be the oldest. The top would be the oldest. So if I understand correctly, um, all of the, the 11 rows after this GEMS transaction that I accidentally crossed <laughs> out when I was. Can you read the GEMS transaction for the, the, the 12th into the record, please? 12th row. 
Sure. From the bottom. Yep. 103358. Okay, so if I understand correctly, everything below that reflects jobs Ms. Campbell applied for after her position in radiology. Yes. Okay. That's how we have them. Uh, that's all the questions I have. Okay. Um, um, Ms. Campbell, um, it is now your opportunity to um, ask um, Ann Mekshin, um cross-examination questions. And those would relate to um, questions that she was asked um, on direct um, by Ms. Jarris. So do you have some cross-examination for Ms. Mekshin? Yes, I have a couple of questions. Thank you. Um, sure, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, on um, Respondents Exhibit 205, the, um, that would be the page, probably. Do you know the name yes. of the exhibit? Is it with the number of the exhibit? And then I can pull it up on the screen. That's probably oh. in the se second part. Yeah. Right. It starts with page 206. 206 is what page it starts with. Yes. Yeah. Do you know the name of the number of the exhibit, Ms. Campbell? And then I can go through my book, my um, bookmark and, and go right to it rather than scrolling through uh, a lot of pages. Do you have the exhibit it's, number? It's exhibit 28. Thank you. All right. There we go. Exhibit 28, page 206. Go ahead. So in, in these exhibit um you um you expressed that there was an in-person meeting there was an in-person meeting notes can you explain why the meetings with donna christensen brian cole and ranji last name is start with a b uh, were conducted with with a note taker um because um we were kind of experimenting with note takers then, um, just because employment relations, um, the team really got developed in 2017. And so when I'm conducting a lot of investigations, um, which I was doing multiple at this time, I was trying out note takers at this time. And, okay. just to help with the workload <laughs> of note taking in. And so can you explain why that was never done with me or conducted or provided to me? It, well, those are a couple of, those are multiple questions. Um, with, when you say that it was done with me or provided to me, I'm, I'm not really sure what, yeah, maybe you want to separate those, uh, Ms. Campbell, into separate questions. Okay, so can you explain that this, the note taking type of meeting was not, um, why it was not provided to me? Oh. Should I wait? Yes, please wait, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm actually not even sure how to turn those off because they don't ring very often, but um, yes, sorry about that. Go ahead. So the, the question, um, um, Ms. Campbell, was why there was not a note taker when you met with um, Ms. Mekshin. Is that your question? Yes. Okay. 
So a note taker is just utilized if they're available. And so, again, I may have not had one available. I don't recall why we didn't have a note taker, but when I didn't have one available, they could not attend. Um, and I, um, during this time there, I, there was, um, can you tell me why there wasn't, um, an in-person meeting down with Janae or, or Hedio from the radiology department? We did conduct it conduct a interview with Hedio and with Janae Orr. Okay, you did. Yep. Okay. And Uh, yeah. Can we go back to uh, Exhibit 27? Okay, let me. That's the con confidential report on page 203? Yes. Okay. Um, in it, in this report, you testified earlier in regards to the allegations. Mm -hmm. um, and that that first portion of that is, is stating the original complaint came from an employee. But later during the interviews, it was focused on others, uh, others with concerns. It mm -hmm. came out. Um, can you tell me more about this? When you say the original complaint, what are you talking? What are what does that mean? The original complaint. So the original complaint, although there was a few going on at one time, there was it's acknowledging that there was one that came specifically from with a HIB complaint. Okay. And is that your complaint, complaint in regards to mine, the one that I filed? Yes. Okay. Uh. Okay, I got a couple more I gotta go back to. Um, is exhibit 11. Looks that's like that's on page um, one forty three is is the cover page and the actual exhibit is okay. one forty four. Thank you. So um, you testified earlier that that this that this was the extension of the probation for myself was. Um, Partly because of the filing of the HIV and within that. And when with this, was there a letter of expectations provided to me? Was there a letter of expectations provided? Is that your question? A letter yeah. was there a letter of expectations provided to you? Okay. Right. 
You want to ask just one question at a time. So um, I can tell you attorneys often ask multiple um, questions. So uh, it's, I'm used to hearing that, but, but please um, just do one question at a time. That would be up to the supervisor is the one that actually would be the person that would give you a letter of expectations. I don't, I don't re recall. It's not saying that there wasn't. I don't know if there was. That would be a question for the supervisor. Okay. Okay, that's it. That Those are all of the questions that I have at this time. All right, um, uh, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. Um, any redirect, um, Attorney Jarris? No. All right, well, is uh, Ms. Mekshin then free to, um, free to uh, leave, Attorney Jarris? I don't plan to call her back for anything. All right. Well, thank you, um, Ms. Mekshin. We appreciate your participation and you are now um, free to leave the hearing. Sure. Wait, can, can I ask oh. a question? Oh, okay. Sorry. Sure. Um, am I going to be called back at any point? Um, I do have two young children at home and I did not get care for them tomorrow, but I don't know how long this will take. So, Attorney Jarris just had just said that she doesn't anticipate okay. calling you again. I think that's the best best okay. that we can give you at this point. Okay, I just want to be clear, okay. thank you. Oh, you're bet, you bet. Thank you again, bye-bye. Thank you everyone, bye. Mm. Make, oh, sure go ahead. make sure yeah. you don't take the exhibits oh. with you, please. <laughs> Do, should All I right, is that, uh, is that where the next witness is going? To, oh, okay, where do you want uh, Ms. Mekshin to take those exhibits? Can I just go pick them up? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So Ms. Pinch will will pick them up. That sounds perfect. All right. All right. Thank All right. You, thank everyone. you. Stay sure. Well. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Should Me I do too. that now? That would probably be that would be a good idea, Ms. Pinch. If you're not too okay. far away, just gather them. Just steps. So good. Okay. Perfect.